What's something you learned embarrassingly late in life? Story 1. When I was in college, 21 years old, I was getting ready to go out and it hit me like a lightning bolt. If you just thread the small end of the belt through your belt loops all the way round, literally any belt can fit your pants. Because up until then, I thought sometimes I just had belt loops that were too small for certain belt buckles. I ran out to my friends and was like, guys, check this out. As I proceeded to demonstrate for them what I had just learned, I genuinely thought they'd be excited for me. It was then that I learned that everyone else on earth knew the right way to wear a belt except me. It's hard to believe how many times I tried to jam the buckle side in first before deciding I just needed bigger belt loops. Story 2. I was 22, working at a restaurant, making myself a salad and I asked the chef for bumps and he stared at me for 60 seconds trying to figure out what I wanted. I explained to him that I wanted bumps in my salad. I have all the rest of the toppings but I now need bumps, guys. My family told me croutons were called bumps my entire life. I called my dad that night and confirmed that bumps are, indeed, actually called croutons. Edit. Secondly, people keep asking, why did my family call them bumps? Well, someone in my family had a speech problem as a kid and couldn't say croutons, so they became bumps. We had other funny names for stuff, but I knew what the real words were. I just never got around to learning about croutons, I guess. Story 3. I learned that pork and beans are not called cowboy beans. I was 18 and asked a grocery store clerk to help me find the cowboy beans. We were looking everywhere, and I was getting frustrated because I knew that every store carried these beans. After a while, I pick up a pork and beans can with a picture and say, See, it looks just like this. He says, you mean pork and beans? Then I realized that my mom called them that so that I would eat them. The look of disappointment from that grocery store clerk haunts me to this day. Story 4. I thought that horses had toes until I was 22. I thought the hoof was a horseshoe and the toes were tucked inside. How did I learn how wrong I was, you ask? I was walking past a cavalry museum and saw a horse statue and loudly remarked, it must hurt so bad when they fold a horse's toes to put them into the shoe. Dozens of horse enthusiasts turned and looked at me with wild bewilderment in their eyes. Story 5. Not me, but my mother. She waits for the shower to warm up before entering. She grew up with a bathtub most of her life and didn't get a shower until she moved out of my grandparents' place in her 20s. She was apparently talking to a co-worker about the winter weather one morning. While lamenting, she goes, and don't you just hate getting into a cold shower on these cold days? It takes so long for the water to get warm. Co-worker, uh, Cheryl. You know you can just wait until the water gets warm, then hop in. Story 6. Not me, but it's hilariously stupid, so I have to share. My sister is one of the smartest people I have ever known. Like she'd never gotten a B in her entire school life. She's now a doctor of physical therapy who runs her own clinic. This woman, at 31 years old, called the family one day and said, Did you guys know it's called fall because leaves fall off the tree? This woman can tell you the name of every muscle in your body, and this is what she comes up with. Story 7. My wife, not me, she had no idea helium made balloons float. We were getting ready for my daughter's first birthday and I had a helium tank. She couldn't believe that I, who is usually very frugal, wasted money on that. I asked her how else we were supposed to do it. Her answer was to just blow them up. I asked her how we were going to get them to float and her response was by the balloons that float. She has a college degree and works at an institution of higher learning. It was just a hole in her knowledge that took a very long time to get filled. Story 8. I didn't know how bra sizes worked. When I was in my teens and early 20s, my boobs were getting bigger and I always assumed that the number meant bigger size. I'm always complaining about how much my boobs and back hurt. My co-worker asked what size bra I wore. I told her, like 38B, she looked at me and said no way. We walked over to the bra department and got size. I ended up being a 34DD. I was absolutely shocked that my mom or no one else taught me this. The relief I felt when I had the right size on since I was about 23 years old, I've been wearing the wrong size. Story 9. I always thought, who would flush the plastic or cardboard applicator down the toilet? 
Why do we really need a sign for this? Are people that stupid? Of course, we only flush the tampon itself. I did this for 10 years until I had an argument with my husband about it. He said to quit flushing them, they are clogging the toilet up. I said I had never flushed them in my life. Then I mentioned how stupid the signs in the bathroom were and who would flush the plastic applicator. He told me that's not what the signs were for and that they were for the tampon itself. I guess I'm not as smart as I thought I was. If only those signs had some fine print or illustrations so people like me could grasp what they meant. Story 10. I was about 8 years old when I discovered that the United States of America is a real country. I'm from Mexico and most movies we see here come from there. So it was strange that all the aliens and superheroes were always in the United States. I thought it was some kind of imaginary place many writers used for their fantasy stories. This also got me into a misunderstanding. I met a kid who told me he was sad because his dad went to the USA. I thought it was some euphemism for saying he was dead. We cried together. When my uncle was doing the travel too, and I was so perplexed that my father showed me a map so I could see where the United States was, it was a discovery. I also thought that London was still as described by Conan Doyle in Sherlock Holmes stories. Seriously believed they were using horses instead of cars just because they're prettier. Story 11. When I was a young teenager, my mom ordered a cafe all pronounced like the cheer at a bullfight at a coffee house. I tried it and loved it. For years after, I would skin coffee house menus looking for a cafe au, never to see it. Every now and then I would get the courage to order off the menu and a barista would nod and make me one, but I always thought I was being difficult. I was in my late 30s when I was in line at a coffee house and saw cafe au lait on the menu, which I had seen thousands of times before. I thought to myself, I can pronounce rudimentary French. Maybe I should order that and see what it is. I got to the counter, asked for a café au lait or café au lait, and have been figuratively smacking my forehead ever since. Story 12. Okay, this is horrible and it's almost 30 years later. I shudder. In 1995, I was 17 and a late bloomer, a very innocent girl. I saw the movie Kingpin and absolutely loved it. When Woody Harrelson goes down on the landlord and she makes the V symbol with her fingers and tongue, I had no idea what that was. So, naturally, I went around doing this. In public. To my parents. Finally, I got a boyfriend and he told me. I still die of embarrassment. Story 13. My wife, who is in her 30s, handed me a new stick of deodorant because she couldn't get the plastic piece off the new stick's caps. I took it, twisted the bottom a couple of times to push the stick up, and took the cap off. She looked at me like I was a witch. She had, for most of her life, struggled with new sticks of deodorant and had no idea you could just push the stick up first, then take the cap off.